Kella, and um, I have communion this morning. So something that I was thinking about today is that, um, you know, every Friday we have youth group, and something very exciting happened this uh, past Friday where um, I asked the kids, I said, okay, how many of you guys know, like, the most famous verse ever, John 3.16, and you know what? A lot of them did not know it, and I was like, this is awesome, because what this says to me is that we have a generation that is ready to receive, and that they are in a place where they don't know, and I was reminded that sometimes we just think, well, everyone knows this stuff. And um, and this past Friday, what was exciting to me is that, you know, we have new kids that, it just means to me that we have new kids that are not necessarily churched kids. And that we really are, as an ecclesia, infiltrating this next generation and bringing the hope of Jesus into their lives. And God just reminded me as we were talking about this encounter that Nicodemus had with Jesus, this man who had it all, who was a political, religious leader, who was probably wealthy, wise, and smart, um, well-respected in his community, and yet there was still something about Jesus that drew him in, that there was still something about this he says, I know, we know that you are from God, sent to teach us. And, um, and Jesus tells him, well, you can only go into the kingdom of heaven unless you've been born again. And Nicodemus says, born again? How can an old man be born again? You have to go back into your mother's womb and come back out? And Jesus reminds him, it's not about the flesh, that only the flesh can give birth to flesh. Only humans can produce human things, but the spirit gives birth to spiritual things. And I believe that this past Friday, we really experienced that with a lot of our youth, that um, that they, for some of them for the first time, were experiencing a spirit-to-spirit connection. And I don't know about you, but this morning, I want to experience not just a human-to-human connection, but a spirit-to-spirit connection with our Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. And so as we take communion this morning, we are reminded that, that without Jesus, we have nothing. And I would challenge us to be like Nicodemus this morning, to come to a place of, man, it's so much more than just head knowledge or reputation of what we have on earth. But let's ask the Lord to increase our hunger and our thirst for his righteousness and his kingdom this morning, that we would increase in our desire to know Jesus better. And what a great way to start that off this morning than with communion. So I'm going to invite us all to stand this morning because I believe that we are just in the presence of God. And he is engaging us in all different elements this morning, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And so let's pray for our communion elements this morning. Jesus, we thank you that you came to not judge the world, but to save it. To not condemn us, but to save us, Lord. That there is nothing, nothing, nothing that we could do on our own to save ourselves. There's absolutely nothing we could do to cross the chasm of sin into heaven. There's not enough that we, there's not enough money that we could give. There's not enough volunteer hours that we could put in. There's not enough good deeds that we could do that could get us into heaven. But it was your son who came became flesh so that we could have new life. And Father, we thank you that today we stand in your presence unashamed, totally forgiven, made right with you because of what we hold in our hands, the body and the blood of Jesus. 
So Lord, we thank you for your body that was beaten and broken and bruised and whipped for my healing. Jesus, we thank you for your blood that was shed so that we could have forgiveness and grace and a new covenant with our Heavenly Father. So Lord, as we take of these elements this morning, we want to have a spirit-to-spirit connection with you today. And we invite you to speak to us, to minister to us, and that we would also engage with you this morning. So we bless you, Lord, and we love you, and we pray these things all together in Jesus' name. Let's take up the elements together.
And I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God Said I'm no longer a slave to fear No Lord Now I am a child I'm no longer a slave. 
child of God. I'm singing to him. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Thank you, Jesus. Because I am a child of God. I'm no longer God. Because I'm no longer a slave to fear. child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that you are filling this place with your joy, Lord, and your goodness, Lord, and your peace, Father, but there's just so much joy in your presence this morning, Lord, and so we ask, God, that you would increase, that you would overflow even more joy throughout this place, Lord, that we would just be bursting and so we welcome you even more, Father God, and we love you, and we bless you, and we pray these things all together in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 So good. Amen. Thank you. All right. So good to worship all together. Um, before you take a seat, we're going to take a time to greet one another. And so you can go ahead and go across the aisles or around the room and just give each other a nice warm hug. Kids, too, before you run off to kids' church, go ahead and find a couple of people to give a hug to. Oh, that's so cute. Um, and even if you're watching at home, take some, let's take some time to greet and love on each other. So good to be here with all of you in person, as well as those of you who are watching online. Um, again, my name is Pastor Michaela, and as we continue our service, we have a couple of announcements, so you can turn your attention to the screen. Aloha, Aloha everyone. everyone. I'm Michaela. And I'm Scott, and we want to welcome you to our service. Today we have a couple of announcements, and the first one is, it's that time of the year, school is back in session which means we are preparing for our back to school blessing, which is coming up on August 18th, 9 a.m., online and in person. And we wanna encourage you to invite your fellow students from preschool to grad school, your teachers, faculty members, and family members to come out to this blessing service. Of course, we're gonna have fun activities and delicious treats afterwards, so we can't wait to see you all there. We want to give a big mahalo to everyone who gave to the food drive. You guys did such a great job, and really, we're blessing so many people by your generosity. So, big mahalo. The last announcement that we have is we also want to say thank you so much for giving so faithfully every single week of your tithes and your offering. A tithe is 10% of what we make, we get to give it back to God, and then everything else that we give is an offering. And so there are three ways that you can give. You can give online, in person, or in the mail. So thank you so much. Well, we hope you have a great service and even better week. Aloha. Aloha. All right. So don't forget to grab a couple of back to school blessing flyers in the back. Before you go, you can hand that out to your teacher friends and anyone that you know that's going back to school. Um, but we can't wait. It's just in a couple of weeks. And then I will be gone for 12 weeks after that. So back to school blessing will be probably my last Sunday. And then I'll see you guys later. <laughs> But anyway, uh, let's stand because we are going to be receiving our tithes and our offerings at this time. And so we're so grateful to God and to each of you who have been just giving so faithfully of your tithes and your offerings.
mean, every single staff meeting, we always just celebrate and thank God for all that he provides. And we also pray for more. And so um, as we say this offering of, or this declaration of aloha, let's say this all together on three. One, two, three. This morning, as we give our tithes and offerings, we are giving up hope and aloha unto the transformation and discipleship of Hawaii and the world. As disciples of Christ, we will follow the example of our leaders as they follow Christ and disciple others to the fourth generation. As well as Ecclesia, we glorify God by experiencing His aloha and transforming the world. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit to bless, not blast, peacemakers, not troublemakers, be ministers, not sinisters, be prophetic, not pleasant. In faith and by the grace of God, we declare God's aloha is transforming me, my family, my community, Hawaii, and the world. I will show God's aloha by controlling myself, choosing connection, listening respectfully, bringing out the treasures in people, and managing my priorities. Because our God is aloha, our God is aloha, our God is aloha. Oh Lord, you are aloha. Right? So you can come down the center aisle and give in the cold bowls up ahead. everyone you know we're on this uh, fundamental series and it's been incredible from our pastors giving the messages to our testimonies has been just truly amazing and we're gonna continue in that but before we go into the series um, today I just wanted to give a just a quick announcement um, if you're reading along in our spa bookmarks you may have noticed in August we're moving from one chapter to two chapters now okay so for some of you you might be like Oh, double the time now. So much more reading. What's going on? Right? And, uh, and part of it is that, you know, uh, it's a little bit repetitive. We are in the book of Numbers. And so just by the title already, you can tell what it's about. So for you people who are all into Numbers, you're going to love this book. Um, but uh, uh, anyone who said the devil is in the details, no, God had it first. Okay? God had the details first. Right? But I'll tell you, one of the things that I've been loving as we've been kind of just strolling through the Bible, I call it a stroll because I don't know if you remember, years ago we read through the Bible in a year. It was like seven to nine chapters a day. Okay, and that was rough. If you missed a day, you're going to read 18 to 20 chapters. You know what I mean? So it was, it was crazy um, uh, if you missed a day or two. Um, but so, so we're taking it slower. So two chapters a day. Just wanted to give you guys a heads up. It's a little bit of an adjustment. But I've been loving it because the whole theme is all about learning how to become sons and daughters of God. That's what God was teaching the Israelites to do, right? And so if, if you ever get caught up in like, man, why so many details? Why is like all these technicalities? It's because they didn't know how to think as sons and daughters of God. And, you know, I've made the, 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 the wrong judgment 
that Israelites were disobedient, rebellious people. They, didn't all, they ended up that way, but they didn't start that way. As you're reading through Leviticus and Numbers, every time they gave instruction from Moses, it said the Israelites obeyed the Lord through Moses, the instructions that were given. You know, and so if there's anything that I could take away from this morning's reading in, in Numbers 9 and 10, it's that we got to stay in the flow of what God is doing. We could start off in the flow, but the key is to stay in the flow of what God is doing. And that's a perfect segue of today's message on, on the fundamental series. We're going to have Pastor Ron speaking. So it's going to be amazing. And, uh, and, and by faith, it's, he's going to keep on time um, <laughs> because he always does. Because uh, Auntie Mots came up to me and said, we're going to have church shorter today, right? Because the fish are biting. So for, as a fisherman... The fisherman pastor will probably stay on time for Auntie Mott's request that we're going to stay on time. But we're going to have Pastor Ron giving the message, and it's all about Jesus. Can you say Jesus? And that's why Pastor Mary and I, when we're putting this whole series together, we're talking about, okay, who's going to give the message on the transformed relationship with Jesus? And it was a no-brainer. It was like, of course, Pastor Ron. Because as we know, Pastor Ron always brings it back to Jesus, right? And then, of course, you're going to get some quotations by either Rocky or Karate Kid or, you know, one of, those, one of those movies. But, man, we love it because it's coming back to the spiritual disciplines of what does it mean to be a disciple of Christ, right? And so many times, if you're like me, as a human being, we complicate things when it's really simple, there's really a simple way, just as God was simplifying the way of what it means to obey the Lord, today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to be hearing from Pastor Ron, uh, just simplifying what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus, okay? So would you welcome with me Pastor Ron? He's already on stage, but to the microphone. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. Hey, guess what? Before I begin the message, today is a special day. You know why? You know why today's a special day? Because yesterday, our senior pastor, our lead pastor, hit the big four zero. How many of you remember when you were 40? All these guys my age. They, so we have a little, come on down. Let's give Pastor Daniel. Pastor Daniel, can you stand? We have a little cake for you. Go ahead. Make a wish. Blow out the candles. Thank you, Lord. Oh, keep blowing. Look, the thing not... Oh, they put some trick candles. All right. All right, let's all stand. Put your, stretch your hand towards Pastor Daniel. You can repeat after me. Thank you, Jesus, for Pastor Daniel, our lead pastor, our senior pastor. We love him. We thank you for the leadership that he leads us with. And right now, we pray you bless him. You bless Aaron. You bless the children. You bless the whole Chinenohana. And today, we say, fill Pastor Daniel with your love, your grace, your mercy. Allow him to surf kewalos and catch big waves and that he would be a testimony out in the surf to bring glory to you every single day. We bless him now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Woo. All right. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. That cake, by the way, is just for your family. We was going to share them with everybody, but we thought, nah, 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 nah. Anyway, anyway, you know, I just was thinking about this. You guys are so blessed. You know why? You guys get the OGs two, year, two weeks in a row. <laughs> Last week was Pastor Cal, and you know, us OGs, uh, we like props. So I brought my, I brought my driver today because... Because uh, today's message is all about focus. 
focus most important. This, by the way, one tailor made. He's a good driver, by the way. But anyway, I wonder what it's. I wonder what this message is going to be about. Anyway, so here's the deal. Why are we on this fundamental series? Okay, and I'm gonna, you know, me. I I, I talk fast. I move fast. I'll try to. But then now that the fish are biting and moss wants to go, I got to move. Why are we on this fundamental series? Because when life presents us with challenges and opportunities and we start losing our focus, we need to return to and embrace some key spiritual fundamentals that will get us back on track. Here's one of them. Watch this. <laughs> Come, take off jacket. You try. Must focus. Concentrate. Focus. Most important. I can't, Mr. Miyagi. Not today, all right? I'm just not in the mood. Why? Because my whole life is going out of focus. That's why. When you feel life out of focus, always return to basic of life. We're praying. Breathing. No breathe, no life. <laughs> Good. Come back to work. Hey, I did it. Good. Focus on yourself. Remember, breathe in, breathe out. I love that. I, you know, every now and then, when I got to get focused, certain movies I watch, this is one of them. <laughs> Field of Dreams is another one. The Last Samurai is another one. A lot of spiritual lessons. You know, if you, if you belong to MGMC, we do a lot of breathing here at MGMC. If, if you've been part of it. And it really all started, started with Sandy. Kupuna Sai. Do you remember Sandy? Pastor Sandy from Kupuna Sai? She taught us how to breathe, right? Breathe in through nose. Hold. Breathe out through mouth. Right? It helps. Very, very powerful, powerful breathing. Pastor Daniel begins our Sunday leadership prayer time with breathing in the breath of God, right? He's taught us how to breathe Yahweh, right? You inhale, you say Yah. Yah. And then you exhale, you say Way. Way. Right? Yah. Way. Right? And it helps. Because, and then even Pastor Cal begins our Friday morning pastors and leaders Zoom group by breathing in the Holy Spirit. You know? Even my dentist. Check this out. This past week, I had to go because I cracked a tooth, right? My dentist is this big-time regatta canoe guy. And I was talking to him about my golf game. And I said, you know, I'm trying to get back to some real fundamentals, you know, keep your head still and, you know, whatever, all this kind of stuff. And I didn't even mention breathing. And you know what he said? He said, when they paddle, his coach tells us the key is breathing. I went, What? I'm going to be preaching this week, I told him. You better watch the service because I'm going to talk about you. 
this guy. And then there's Josh Hayashida. He, he would have been here today, but he worked really hard this past week, you know. And so he just texted me. He said, sorry, Uncle Ron. I can't remember. Josh Hayashida won the Manoa Cup two years in a row. Two years in a row. But this past year, and I was there with Glenn. Where's Glenn? Glenn, raise your hand. Where are you? Right there, Glenn and Carol. I was there. It was the greatest comeback in Manoa Cup history. Josh Ishida. To make it simple, he was four down with only four holes left. All the other guy had to do was either tie or win one hole, and the match is over. When they interviewed Josh, this is what he said. I Look mean, I'm so in shock. Um, after I missed that putt on 14, I was like, I just had lost. Like, I've never been down that much. I've never been dormy for that many. I mean, I'm so in shock. Um, after I missed that putt on 14, I was like, I just had lost. Like, I've never been down that much. I've never been dormy for that many holes before. Just give myself an opportunity. Just breathe. Just, uh, hit the best shots that I can and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, after this, it's going to be such a blessing to go back to back. Did you hear that? He said, all I did was I, I just I kept breathing. See, Josh has a sports psychologist. I don't have a sports psychologist. I just play. Josh is at another level. So he has a, he has a sports psychologist. His sports psychologist asked him, so Josh, do you breathe? And Josh goes, I, I breathe to, to live. He goes, no, 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 no. Do you take deep breaths? So he taught Josh how to take deep breaths. And he told Josh, when you take deep breaths, your whole body relaxes. You know what I've been doing when I play golf now? I take deep breaths. And you know what? It doesn't help me. I don't know. But, <laughs> but anyway, I'm working on that. Spiritually. Listen to this. Spiritually, when we pause and breathe in the breath of God, we refocus our spirit, mind, and body on Jesus, resulting in realigning our lives to get us back on track. Amen? Hebrews 12 says this, And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on what? Jesus, amen. The problem is sometimes we get distracted. Everybody say distracted. And we drift off the path. Japanese has this phrase, achikochi. Everybody say achikochi. See, now, now you're learning Japanese. Achikochi means this, going from here to there, up, down, left, right, running around like one chicken without a head. When we focus and get when we lose focus and get distracted, instead of staying on track, our lives become all achikochi. Josh, Josh Hayashida, he hits his ball straight down the line. My ball, achikochi. Achikochi, man. Here's the thing. Our goal is to stay on the straight and narrow path of life instead of going all achikochi. So how's your life today? How's my life today? I'm preaching to myself. You guys can listen in if you want. This message is for me. Are you moving straight or are you going all achikochi? So let's pray. Father, speak to us today. Show us what it is that you want us to learn about focusing on you so that we can stay on the straight and narrow. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Sorry, I got I to gotta adjust this. Oh, by the way, that's my grandkids. I don't know. That's, my, that's Hopi, Gracie, and uh, okay, now let me just get this back. Hang on. Hang on. Here we go. Okay. So. The transformation ship of Jesus. Two things we grow in as we allow Jesus to transform us. Character and discipline. Everybody say character. 
everybody say discipline. Here's the thing. What is character? What is character? Simply put, character is who we are, who we really are when no one is looking. Character is who we really are on the inside and not so much what we show on the outside. Look at this proverb. As a face re is reflected in water, so the heart reveals the real person. This is the theme of Karate Kid, right? Karate here. Karate never here. Then I thought about this phrase. And they may not use it in Karate Kid because it's done already. But I would think if Daniel was there, I would have said, I would have told him, Daniel Sung, you can be white belt on the outside, but I know you black belt on the inside. How's that one? <laughs> That's pretty good, huh? Because it doesn't matter what's on. And, and, and the other one is this. You can be black belt on the outside. As long as you're not white belt on the inside, right? You see, that's the whole key. I wanted to share a couple examples. My uncle in Hilo, I was 10 years old, and uh, we were at the Hilo, right next to the Hilo Bay Hotel. There's a park in Hilo. You know where that park is in Hilo? You guys know where, right? 10 years old, having eating box lunch. You remember back then, had one, it was... The lunch was actually in one box, yeah? You remember the white box, and they had the sushi and the chicken and all that, right? That's why they call it box lunch, right? And so we're eating, and then I noticed my uncle, my Hilo uncle, and he starts walking around the park picking up rubbish. And so I walk over to him to throw away my rubbish, and, and this stranger comes up to him and says, you know, you're a good man. That generation did things without tuning their horn. That's character. Pastor Cal told me about Ed Silvoso once. He, they, were in the out, they were downstairs. I don't even think Cal remembers this. It was a conference. They were in the downstairs bathroom. And he noticed that before Ed left, Ed Silvoso now, before he left the bathroom, he stepped into the rubbish can because it was overflowing with paper towels. This is Ed Silvoso. This is a world changer. But he saw that and he said, I'm going to just, you know. Character is who you are when nobody is watching. Oh, I wanted to mention this. Every August 4th is a very special day for me. Because it was on August 4th in uh, 2017 that my mom went to heaven. I'm mean, sorry, that, my, that August 4th is my mom's birthday. And in 2017, August 8th, she went to heaven. So every August 4th, I kind of I kinda talk to my mom, you know. And as I was preparing this message, that thought just came back. If anybody in my family was the example of character, one that never tutored her horn, one that always was in the background, it was my mom. So I just thought I'd throw that in to honor my mom. When we do good things in secret, God rewards us in secret. Look at Matthew 6. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that your giving will be in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. When you pray, you are not... To be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So why is character so important? Because character lays a solid foundation for our lives. Without a solid foundation, our lives cannot withstand the storms of life, right? As we read in Matthew 7. But here's the thing. You can't really see 
How solid the foundation of a house is until it is tested by a storm. You can't really see how solid a person's foundation is until it is tested by the challenges, opportunities, thank you, Glenn, and the storms of life. How solid is our foundation? What we show on the outside is one thing. Our foundation is what keeps us standing up. Our foundation in Jesus is what keeps us alive when the storms of life hit us. That's what character is. So how do we develop character? Two words. Jesus said, follow me. Everybody say, follow me. Two of the most powerful words Jesus says. So we grow in character as we follow Jesus. Read, here's my suggestion. As we follow Jesus, read the red letters in the Bible. What's the red letters? That's the words of Jesus. The, the, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 to 7 was his greatest sermon. And what I love about this sermon it is that it wasn't only spoken to his disciples. It was spoken to everybody, even the, even the unbelievers. Such a powerful, powerful message. The Sermon on the Mount is our guide to building character. And specifically what I want to read today, I want to read all eight of the Beatitudes. And as I'm reading these Beatitudes. I want you to I want you to just let the Holy Spirit speak to you, okay? Just let the Holy Spirit speak to you individually. Okay, here we go. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here's my suggestion. Take one beatitude every single day. Ask the Holy Spirit, which one should I work on today? I know for me that last one is such a challenge. God blesses you when people insult you and persecute you. Boy, I'm from Kaneohe. I went to Castle. That kind of stuff, a little bit hard. Bless no blast. Ah, I don't like that phrase sometimes. That's why I'm working. I'm not perfect. I'm in process, right? That's what we said. Character is an ongoing thing. Take one beatitude each day and ask Jesus to help you to practice that throughout the day. Here's the thing. Character building takes work, practice, and focus. It doesn't come naturally. Here's the problem. You know what does come naturally and doesn't take practice? Everything that's the opposite of character. That's called sin. We don't need to practice sin. Anybody need to practice to sin? <sighs> Are you joking me? That's why we need Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. So here's the application, some practical applications. Every day, ask the Holy Spirit to show you one thing you can do to demonstrate character. All right, here's some suggestions. Pick up rubbish at a park. Push the paper towels down in an overflowing trash can. Let someone go before you in the line at Costco or Starbucks. Whoa. Park far away at Costco to give others a closer spot. Whoo. Bless the guy that cut in front of you on the road. Whoa. You know the place that really reveals our character? Driving. Everybody say driving. 
Here's my suggestion. Invite Jesus to sit next to you in the car. For those of you that are married, if your wife is sitting next to you, you don't need Jesus in the car. You got your wife. I'm speaking from experience. This morning when I came, when I came to work this morning very early, I did that. I said, Jesus, sit next to me. And so I'm driving. And it works. You know why I know that it works? Because I, I, I try to drive the speed limit maybe five miles over. I, you guys ever tried driving the speed limit in, in, on, the, on Oahu? Even five miles over the speed limit, you know what happens, right? Especially, especially if you're on like Kahikili is one way down one. And I'm driving speed limit, 35 miles an hour. Maybe I'm going 38. This guy comes, hug my okole. <laughs> if I never tell Jesus to sit next to me and I was driving my junk van, I would have slammed the brakes, let this guy hit me from the back so I get one new fender. Sorry, I'm just being honest. I'm working on character. But it worked. I said, Jesus, that guy is hugging my okole. You know what Jesus said? It, here's a free one. WWJD. You want to build character. WWJD. What would Jesus do? WWJS. What would Jesus say? That's how you build character. You just keep asking Jesus. So Jesus is sitting next to me. So Jesus goes, bless the guy. So I'm driving, and I went, Lord, I bless this guy that's hugging my okole. <laughs> and then when the, when the road went into two, he drove right around me, and he cut back in front of me. And I said, Lord, bless the guy. Because my wife would know. If Jesus wasn't sitting next to me, I'm telling this guy. <laughs> that's another sermon. Anyway. We're having too much fun. Let's move on. Following Jesus helps us to live a disciplined life. Everybody say discipline. This is the second part of today's message. The key to living a disciplined life, and this helps me, because discipline is not something that comes easily for me. Pray and obey. Everybody say pray and obey. Pray and obey. Pray and obey. You know why? Because for me, if I procrastinate, if I know God is saying to do something, but then I kind of, uh, I tend to not do it. And then the Lord shows me this sign. And then I hear the word. What's the words? Just do it. And so I go in, okay, Lord, i just going to do it. i just going to do it. Look at this, 1 Corinthians 9. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what I sh do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, my life, my, preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Because I knew I had to preach today, Pastor Daniel, I was working really hard because I read this verse. And you know what? It's it's awesome. It's awesome. So I'm going to share some of the things that I discipline myself every day. Pick what you want. Eat the bones. Eat the meat. Throw away the bones. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. I create a daily schedule to follow Jesus. Now, I wake up at 5 o'clock every day. I'm a morning person. If you're not a morning person, no problem. If you're a night person, you can do this at night. I wake up 5 o'clock every day. Now, I don't need an alarm clock because I live in Kaneohe. <laughs> And this is my alarm clock. Every, you want to hear that again? Yeah. And you know what it is? I live in, I live in Kaneohe. If you live in Waipahu, your alarm clock goes on every, every five minutes. But anyway, so it's so interesting. It's, you know, it's interesting. When I was preparing this message, I was preparing this PowerPoint at 5 o'clock in the morning. Guess what, was, guess what I was hearing? Huh? As I was working on this PowerPoint. That's what I was hearing. I'm not kidding you. In, and I walked out of my house. There was that rooster. So I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And then I think about this verse very early in the morning. Mark 135. While it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. I figure if it's good enough for Jesus, I'm going to do this, you know. When I open my eyes, I say these two things. Good morning, Holy Spirit. 
I mean, I'm lying there in bed next to my wife, and I open my eyes at 5 o'clock, and I say, good morning, Holy Spirit. And then I say the Lord's Prayer as I'm lying there, our Father. And I make it personal, my Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread. And forgive me of my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. And lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And you know what? It kind of it sets my brain in the right place. But then the hardest part, I actually got to get out of bed. Whoo! Especially when cold, a little bit hot, but discipline. And I do it. And then I go for a walk with Jesus. I live next to a beautiful little shopping center. The parking lot is big. Three times around is a mile. So I do that. It's very quiet. Number two, then I spend solitude time with Jesus. The Lord showed me this sauna. I shared this with some of you guys. S-A-U-N-A. -A. I do a sauna before I do my spa. S stands for silence. It's got to be a quiet place. A stands for adoration, where I adore God, I praise God, I worship Him. U is unload, where any negative thought that comes into my mind, I give it to the Lord. Lord, I release it to you, I give it to you, and I wait until all the negative stuff is gone. And then I breathe. N stands for nose. I couldn't think of anything else. But anyway, I breathe in the breath of God. I breathe in God. I let God speak to me. I let God speak to me. And guess what happens? Inevitably, another negative thought comes in. So I give that. I unload that. So I'm going from U to N, back and forth as I'm walking. I'm unloading. I'm releasing everything. And then I'm breathing in the breath of God. And then I end with adoration. And then I go back to my place. And then I have my spa. And then sometimes I read a proverb. I learned this from Pastor Cal. Choose the proverb that coincides with the day of the month. So today is August 4th. So this morning, I read Proverbs chapter 4. You want to learn character. You want to learn discipline. You want to learn wisdom. Read one proverb a day. You can read it morning and night. Coincides with the day of the week. And lastly, choose a verse of the day to guide me, I choose a verse of the day to guide me to stay focused in following Jesus, especially as I go through challenges and opportunities that could easily distract me. Those challenges and opportunities, most of the time, there's a name tied to those things. Wherever you work, wherever, what your, your neighbors, maybe you have a neighbor that tends to blast stuff at, late at night. You know, maybe you have a co-worker that, man, this is so challenging. Ask the Holy Spirit. Let me give you some of my favorites. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Zechariah 4.6, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. One of my favorite verses that I really don't like, but I have to do it. James 1.19, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. So I take these verses, I take one verse, and I repeat it every, throughout the day, and it really helps me. The key to growing in discipline is to grow in Jesus. 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and what? Self-discipline. I'm going to call up Lana Kalihiki. Let's give Lana a hand. Lana, come up here. Lana's going to share. Wait, let me turn this on. Hi, Lana. Uh, All right. So maybe you can share. We, we, we talked the other day. What is it that you do? How do you spend every day to follow Jesus? Like, like what time do you wake up in the morning? I wake up very early, like how having been retired for over five years. I'm up like three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Okay. And what do you do when you wake up? I eat. 
You eat. Okay, good. Good. I don't. Generally, what I do is um, I'll read the Bible. Read the Bible. I'll also read our daily bread. Wow. Um, and then sometimes I will watch the Christian program. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll watch, I'll watch um, Joyce Meyer. Wow. David Jeremiah and Joe Oster. So every day you discipline yourself to do these things. How does that help you throughout the day? I try to discipline myself. Sometimes I admit, oh, I go in Starbucks, I go and drink coffee, I'll read the Bible later. But then eventually I do. But, you know, being, I've been divorced for several years. And so being single, I do have a large family. I have my biological family. And then I was adopted and raised and grew up in Kaneohe. But I do have friends. I have my church friends. I have my classmates from Kamehameha. And I have right. other friends. Awesome. So I don't know. Did I answer So how do you then after, after as you, <clears throat> you, you're retired, so how do you know what you're going to do throughout the day? Like, and, and how do you follow Jesus throughout the day? Where do you go? What do you do? Well, technically... I get one index card like this, and I put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, oh. and I list things that I'm going to do. Oh, okay. What, that's, I, that's what good. I primarily like to do daily is I swim at the public pool. Wow. I used to swim at the YWCA but downtown, but they, they kicked us out. They okay. discontinued that program. Wow. But like Pastor Daniel or like Ken Kondo, they enjoy surfing. I enjoy swimming. So, um, you know, I just ask, okay, Holy Spirit, you know, what are you, what are you, what are you trying to tell me? What, what am I supposed to be doing? Well, so you, you, are, you, you have some physical stuff that you do. You discipline yourself with some physical activity. You don't just sit around all day and watch TV. No, no. Wow. No, because okay. I fall asleep. You fall asleep, yeah. Okay, so how does God, because I know you shared some testimonies about how God brought people, as you were doing these things, God brought some people in your life, you know, that were, that had needs, and what did you do? How did you, how did you minister to them? Well, I, I'm comfortable praying with anyone. Wow. And, um, you know, I, I feel good about that. Wow. About praying. And um, there was this woman, she was sitting at the bus stop, and I, I live downtown in China. So she was sitting at the bus stop, and I went up to her, and I complimented her about her outfit. Wow. And I sat next to her, and I said, how are you doing? And she wow. told me that her back was bothering her. Wow. And, you know, this is what, you know, I believe God leads us to, is you never know. You say hi to someone. Amen. And they may need prayer. And so we prayed about her back healing. Wow. So you prayed for her? Right, I mean, out loud for her. Well, it was wow. just her and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Because so you heard God speak, you prayed, and then you obeyed. Yeah, I right. tried to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What was that other testimony about when you went swimming? You said there was another testimony. You went swimming, and you met somebody. Well, you know, I've been going to Kalihi Valley Pool, which is located on Camforth Road. And um, there, were, there was this gentleman and this woman. It was just small talk. And so the guy said he lives on the windward side. So I said, oh, you went to Castle High School? He said, no, I went to Moanalua High School. And wow. so then I told him, I said, oh, our church is located in, in Moanalua. He looks at me. He goes, you know Terry Wasano? I said, yes. Wow. He goes, that's my sister. His name is Brian. His name wow. is Brian. Wow. And he lives in Kaneohe. But yeah. Lana, and I'm going to have you pray for us. It's clear to me that you are following Jesus throughout the day. I mean, you're always thinking about what is, what would Jesus, 
what would Jesus do? What, what does Jesus want me to do? Right? You, you're, not just, you're not just going achikochi, right? There's focus in your life, right? If, 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 if somebody's here today and they go, hey, man, I, I want some of that. How do, I get, how do I get that? What would you say to them? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Let's pray. I'm going to have you pray right now. Okay? Go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for every day, Lord. You are our breath of life, Lord. And you're here within each of us, Lord. I thank you for the message that Pastor Ron shared today about being a disciple. And yes, you are the breath of life, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for my sisters and brothers here and their families. I thank you for MGMC. I thank you for our pastors and for the commitment to you. But I also thank you, Lord, for our personal relationship with you, Lord. And you know, the state motto says, the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. And in the same way, our lives, Lord, our lives in you are also perpetuated in righteousness. So we give you all the glory in your son Jesus' name. And I pray that the fish will wait for months until she gets out there. We love you, Lord. We praise you. Amen. Amen. Let's give a hand to Lana. Thank you, Lana. I want to I wanna close by, um, you know, there was, a, there was a period in my life where I, my life was out of focus. Period in my life when, uh, when, uh, when Jesus wasn't, I wasn't following Jesus, you know. I wasn't praying and obeying. I was... I wasn't doing any of that. And then I came back to the Lord. And the Lord, because of his leading in my life, I'm growing every day. I'm not perfect. I'm in process. I'm growing in, in, in character and discipline. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. I was, as I was reading Leviticus, I want to share one of my spas with you. I asked, Father, what scripture are you speaking to me about? And he says this, Leviticus 22. You must faithfully keep all my commands by putting them into practice. For I am the Lord. Do not bring shame on my holy name. For I will display my holiness among the people of Israel. I am the Lord who makes you holy. It was I who rescued you from the land of Egypt that I might be your God. I am the Lord. Dad, what are you saying to me? Dear Ronnie, my son, I have rescued you from your past rebellion and captivity in your Egypt. I have taken the broken pieces of your life and created a valuable masterpiece. As you live today by two simple phrases, follow me and pray and obey, you will experience a transformed life that will bless you, your family, your community, Hawaii, and the world. You are my spiritual kintsugi. This is a kintsugi. This is what I have in my office. If any of you want to see it, you're welcome. I cannot fit 100 guys in my office, but if you want to come, just... It's beautiful. What a kintsugi is, it's, it's, a, it's a ceramic piece that has broken apart. But instead of throwing it away, the craftsmen put it together. And they, they, they mend it together. That frame is what it is. And, and let me just read what the frame says. Kintsugi, 
the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery by mending the area of breakage with lacquer mixed with powdered gold, silver, or platinum. As a philosophy, it treats breakage and repair as part of the history of an object rather than something to disguise. Originally considered ugly, craftsmen began seeing that such ugliness was considered inspirational as it connoted beauty in broken things. The bowls became valued even more highly. The mending together of broken pieces with gold to create a masterpiece teaches us that instead of seeing scars as flaws, we can see beauty in brokenness turning scars into stars. For me, shame from mistakes in my past kept me from embracing the amazing grace and mercy of God and hindered me from experiencing his complete forgiveness. This Kintsugi art piece shows me that God took my mess and he turned it into a message. His message is simply with Jesus still get chance. Amen. I read that whenever I walk into my office. I see that. So here's the question. What about you? Where are you today? Jesus is ready to meet you, to love you, to transform you into a new person, a person of character and discipline. Jesus is ready to get you back on track to move you along the road of life that God has planned for you. The key prayer is this. I release everyone and everything to you. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Right now, as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let Jesus tell you how much he loves you no matter what happened in the past, no matter what's going on right now. Those of you watching this, listening to this, let Jesus show you, tell you how much he loves you. We began with the transformation ship with the Father. Then we went to the Holy Spirit. And today, we're talking about Jesus, the one who went to the cross for you and me so that we get to have life and not just life, regular kind of life, but abundant life. So right now, as your head is bowed, I'm going to say a prayer. If you have yet to fully give your life and release everything to Jesus and receive him. I want to invite you to, to repeat this prayer after me. Maybe you are a Christian, but this message has spoken to you. Maybe you are lost. Maybe you have lost focus. Maybe the Lord is saying, yeah, character, discipline, start today. Then if that's you, I want to invite you to pray this prayer after me also. All right, in fact, I'm going to ask everyone, I'm going to ask everyone to repeat this prayer after me to encourage those that are going to be recommitting their lives to Jesus or saying this for the very first time, okay? So let's pray. Just say, Dear Jesus, I thank you that you died for me. I thank you that you love me. And right now, I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord. I choose now to follow you. I choose now to invite you to sit next to me in my car, in my house, wherever I go. I invite you to come into every relationship that I have. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. You are awesome. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Keep your heads bowed. I'm going to count to three. If you pray that prayer for the first time or this time, man, it meant something. 
on a count of three, I just want you to look up at me, okay? One, two, three. Yes, thank you. Amen. Let me look this way. Okay, right there. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Okay. Father, I saw, I saw about three people. Lord, I thank you. That character and discipline is not something that comes easy for us. But with you, Jesus, as we follow you, as we pray and obey, you're going to transform our lives. And we're going we're gonna to experience joy unspeakable. So we surrender all to you, Lord, right now. And we love you and we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Pastor Daniel. Oh, Pastor Marion. Hey, how, how many of you were really blessed by what Pastor Ron shared? And not only Pastor Ron, but Auntie Lana as well, right? God is doing... One thing that I'm really blessed is the testimonies, it's really showcasing who MGMC is. This is us, this is family. How many of you are just really blessed by that? I'm so blessed hearing the testimonies. As Pastor Ron was sharing, I really love this, the sauna. And at MGMC, we've got sauna and spa, right? But as I was looking at this, Silence, adoration, unload, nose, adoration. When you go to a sauna, the reason that you sit in the sauna is to empty your, your is to re release impurities, right? You sweat out impurities. And this is what it means when we're walking with Jesus, right? As Pastor Ron was sharing, that as we're walking with him, we're being emptied of ourselves so that we can follow him in character and discipline. I think if you didn't get the opportunity, I would encourage you to take a picture of that and begin to do this and begin to focus on Jesus, to empty yourself, to silence, to give him adoration. I think if we just did that, if we began just giving the Lord adoration, thanking Jesus for what he's done, right? stopping, pausing, so that we can release the impurities, release the things that are holding us down and say, Lord Jesus, I wanna follow you. I believe that what Pastor Ron prayed this morning is bringing you back to a relationship with Jesus to pause and to say, Lord, I want you in my life. I want you in my life. This is what it's all about, is transformation ship that we can be connected with God, right? And so the prayer has happened, and we say, go do it. Go do it and walk with Jesus this week, amen? All right, we're gonna stand. We're gonna close out and just pray. So Lord, we just thank you, God, for what you are doing. Thank you, Jesus for the sacrifice that you gave for us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being the example. When we look at how do we follow God, we look to you, Jesus, because you are the prime example. We wanna follow you, Jesus, and we want to pray and obey, but we wanna walk in your ways, follow you and pray and obey. God, we love you, we thank you, we, we praise you, Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you, Lord, that you are bringing transformation in our lives, in our families, in our, in our Hawaii, in the world, Lord. Lord, you are faithful and you are good. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll be blessed this week. Remember, if you didn't get the opportunity to give, you've not missed the opportunity. Uh, it's still up here. Also, we can, we'll be blessed if you can help us. Uh, stack the chairs, but there's a certain way. Don't just throw them up there. Because these chairs are expensive. We want them to last like 50 years. So, yeah. So stack the chairs. Feel free to hang out. Feel free to fellowship. Just don't forget your kids. Amen. All right. Be blessed.